All right, Badger, cut that out. Give that money back to him. What floor? Because I say so. Come on, go on, throw it down the floor. Now, Mr. Pete, coming into town all starting a crap game. You ought to be in reform school. I didn't start the game. You got the dice right in your greasy mitts. Don't lie to me. I ain't lying. Shut up, I'm ashamed of you. You're nothing but a back alley punk. You'll never be anything else. What are you getting so sore about all of a sudden? Because I don't want you to make the same mistakes. The Golden Age of Television presents Jack Carson in High Class Type of Mongrel with Leora Dana and Stephen Wooten after these messages. <gasps> a wart makes it difficult to express yourself with your hands. Well, new Clear Away Wart Remover is clinically proven to remove warts fast. Our medicated disc dissolves away the wart while the cover-up disc conceals it. New Clear Away from Dr. Scholes. Conceals as it heals. Want an adjustable bit? Hello, Doc. Hello, Hi, Bert. Now, you missed a great poker game the other night. That's what I hear. You know, Sid. Hey. Hey, get away from there. You hear me, Badger? Keep your lousy mitts off of there, I'm telling you. I cleaned your windshield. Ah, uh, get lost. Well, anyway, Doc, Sid Sweeney gets home like at 3.30 in the morning, see? And he falls right flat in his face. No. <laughs> Come on, you cheapskate. I cleaned your windshield. Give me a dime, huh? Get out of my way, you punk kid. Get on the sidewalk. Doc, do me a favor. Throw a germ in this kid, will you? Now beat it, Badger. Go on. A lousy little dime. Kennedy, he's a cheapskate. Kennedy, he's a cheap. Brother, if I was just your size. If I was your size, I'd go on a diet. Yeah? Well, come well, on, let me Bert. We'll be late. Motion's carried. All right, now we've agreed to call our group the Big Fathers. We'll give our Saturdays for a three-month period. Now, just a minute, Judge. I'd like to know a little more about this. If you and Doc could get here on time, Bert, you'd find out. Yeah, well, that dog of mine is coming this season. I've been trying to find a pedigreed male for him. Well, Bert, we don't want juvenile delinquents in our town. So we've voted to be like a big father to some of the underprivileged kids. To give them one decent day a week, say Saturday, a day of companionship to share some of our blessings with them. Well, nobody made a big father project out of me when I was a kid. Oh, come on now, Bert. Now, don't start that. Just a minute, you guys. I slugged my way up. Dependence. Now you guys are saying we got to mollycoddle a bunch of wild brats. Well, I go on record. I'm against it. Well, I'm afraid you're too late, Bert. We've already voted. All right, fellas, now let's find out who's going to get who. Now, I've got the boys' names on slips of paper in this hat. Now, just reach in and grab one. Butch Bittman. <laughs> that sounds like a real hellion. Bunch of darn nonsense. Bert? Do I have to? Yeah. Are you kidding? Good morning, Janet. This is young Badger O'Banion. This is Mrs. Kennedy, Badger. We've been expecting you, Badger. How do you do? Hi. Well, I want you to feel that the house is yours. Just make yourself at home in it. Oh, Bert. Bert, will you come in? I know he'll be anxious to see you. Stop shouting. I can hear you. Well, look who's here, darling. Yeah. John Dillinger. Well, I've got lots more deliveries to make, Bert. I'll see you all later. Now, you be a good boy, Badger. Thank you, Judge, and goodbye. Well, we're delighted to have you with us. Aren't we, Bert? Hmm? Yeah, sure. Well, I have strict instructions. This is a big father project, not a big mother project, so you two run along and get to know each other. <laughs> I'll wait, see you for lunch, Badger. Wait a minute. Where are you going? You're not going to just walk away and leave me alone with them, are you? Now, you can't back out now, Bert. Every member of the Chamber of Commerce is doing his part. This is a fight to stamp out juvenile delinquency. Well, well if it's a fight, i got a right to choose my own weapons to clobber the enemy, which is exactly what I'd like to do to Badger. Do you know why you don't like him? Of course I know why I don't like him. Because I hate him. Who does he remind you of? Jack the Ripper. Who else was brought up without parents? Just a no-good uncle who didn't even feed him regularly. All right, all right, but I didn't... I didn't let that stop me. I kept at it till I struck oil. I made this town. I made some of myself, too. What's Badger ever done? But Bert, he's only 12 years old. He's 13 if he's a day, and he's still a failure. Look, I, I, I'm not the type to be a mother. Bert, since I can't have any children of my own, I'd just like to see us do something for these underprivileged children. I think we owe it to them. But why can't I have a halfway decent kid to work with? A respectable kid. Because that kind doesn't need help, Bert. Yeah. 
Some deal. But all the kids in town, I gotta draw you out of the hat. You're not even a kid. You're a delinquent midget. Look, Fatso. The judge says, come here or go to reform school. Some choice, huh? Okay? So entertain me, Big Daddy. Don't call me that. Okay, Fatso. Yeah. How would you like me to show you the rope trick? <laughs> With you at the end of the rope, huh? Ha, ha. Are you a square ball? Yeah? Well, let me tell you. I'm going down to the kennels. You can come along if you want to. <laughs> Hi, Mac. Good morning, Miss Kendi. Uh, this is Fire Frost, isn't it? Yeah, fine-looking dog there. Yeah. You ought to get some litter out of these two. Mm-hmm. Say, who's the kid? Oh, him? He's one of those underprivileged kids some of us are taking on on Saturdays. Hey, hey, what's the matter with you? Don't open that gate. Is she yours? Yeah, sure, she's mine. What's she doing locked up? She's in season. Uh... Quit asking questions. Oh, she could have pups. Yeah, that's a general idea. That's Ladybird. That there's about $4,000 worth of champion setter you're looking at. So who cares how much he costs? <laughs> Smart aleck kid, huh? Hey, Mac, you gonna put Fire Frost in with Ladybird right away? Couple of days yet. I'll keep in separate kennels for now. Uh-huh. You gonna marry her to that? What's the matter with him? His hind legs are cockeyed. What are you, stupid? He's a show dog. They all stand that way. Cry money. Huh? Cry money. What does that mean? Just cry money. You're a great specimen, aren't you? Look, look at you. Did you ever wash your hands? I don't have to take that kind of talk from you. You're supposed to entertain me, not flap your fat lips at me, Big Daddy. Don't call me that. Then entertain me. All right, already. Here's a beautiful Saturday morning. I was going fishing. You got to ruin the whole thing. Why don't you go watch television? Kid stuff. But I'll go fishing with you. What do you know about fishing? Everything. Yeah? All right, we'll go fishing. But you keep your mouth shut so you don't scare all the fish out of the lake. You understand? Hey! Didn't you ever use a rod and a reel for crying out loud? It's a lousy one, that's why. Nothing wrong with it if you know how to use it. Why don't you quit flapping and go around pretending you know things when you don't? Why don't you ask me and learn something, stupid? I'm not asking anybody for help. Give me the rod, I'll okay, do it. Okay, kid, don't be afraid of your ignorance and quit bluffing. Now, you never fished before in your life, admit it. So what about it? So ask somebody who knows, that's all I'm saying. Okay, kid. There. Ah. Let's level with each other. This big father thing of you and me, that's for the birds, right? Cry money. You said it. All right, all right. Now, we're being honest with one another. We understand each other. I ain't the type, you ain't the type. But gee, it's a nice day. Lots of fish around here. We, why don't we call a truce and have a nice day of fish at least, huh? What do you say? That's okay with me. All right, then let me show you how to use one of these things. Now, first of all, when you cast, you put your thumb here, see? Now, don't forget. All right, you all set? I'll do it. Let's try it. Yeah. Ah, shut up. You'll scare all the fish. Hello, darling. Hello, oh, honey. It's great company. You slept all the way home. Boy, an eyeball's just gonna about hit the spot with me right now. Wait a minute. You're not just going to leave him in like a sack of potatoes, are you? Let him be. He's sleeping. Oh, Bert, how can you? Now, you carry him upstairs right now. We'll put him to bed. I don't want a drink. Now. Holy smoking mackerel. All right. Little thing, you probably wore him out. He's just a little boy. Well, how did the day go with him? I had a lousy time. You got good color in your cheeks. First time I've seen you come home from a day fishing without being exhausted. That kid drove me out of my mind all day long. He's a bluffer. You should have seen the mess he made out of his line. Looked like a plate of spaghetti. Oh, well, I'm sure he'll catch on. 
Looks like a pretty smart kid. Yeah, too smart. Pool hall smart. I bet he holds a pencil like a billiard cue. Well, Mrs. Kennedy, dinner will be ready in ten minutes. Thank you, Henry. I guess I better get cleaned up. So, uh, Jan. Mm -hmm. Maybe we better keep some supper warm for the kid, huh? The golden age of television will continue in a moment. Five-year-old Eddie Haynes may never see his next birthday. His lungs are like an 80-year-old's. His heart is weak and tired. Eddie is dying of cystic fibrosis. Knowing that Eddie's only hope was a heart-lung transplant, his mother brought him to Minneapolis. The crisis has been long, drawn out, and financially devastating. But Eddie's hanging on. Together with other transplant families, they're staying at Potter's House, run by the Children's Transplant Association. Potter's House cares for families in crisis. Many have lost everything they own trying to keep their child alive. Imagine your child dying because you couldn't afford plane fare to a transplant center, or life-saving medicine, or motel bills for months at a time. If you'd like to help one of these families, call with your gift of $18 a month. Through the Children's Transplant Association, you can help provide emergency flights, medical care, whatever is needed to help save a child's life. I strongly support the Children's Transplant Association. It has done a fantastic job of helping children to achieve the gift of life, something we should all support. How would you feel if your child had only one chance to live, but you couldn't afford to give it to him. Don't wait. Call with your gift of $18 a month. Help a dying child have a life-saving transplant. Help a family caught in a crisis. For Eddie and 15,000 others, life depends not only on the miracle of modern medicine, but on the miracle of someone caring. Won't you please call now? to the golden age of television. Well, he's been with us nine weeks. He's doing all right, I suppose. He's, he's a mean little cuss, but so far I've been able to handle him. Pretty tough character, Hubbard. <laughs> Almost as tough as I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, with nobody but an old aunt to take care of him, I guess he's had to learn to shift for himself. No, no. A boy like that, he just needs somebody to keep him on a straight and narrow, that's all. Were you thinking of taking on the job, Bert? I mean, for good. Who, me? Are you kidding? I don't want no little kid hanging around making my life miserable. But if I ever did do it, I'd know how to keep that kid in line. He's not a bad little guy, you know. He's quick and he's smart, and who knows, with the right kind of training, he might shape up. Talking about Badger? Yeah. He's got a pretty good business going for him right now out in the hall. Have a look, Bert. <laughs> All right, Badger, cut that out. Give that money back to him. What floor? Because I say so. Come on, go on, throw it down the floor. Now, Mr. Pete, let me get the town hall starting a crap game. You ought to be in reform school. I didn't start the game. You got the dice right in your greasy mitts. Don't lie to me. I ain't lying. Shut up, I'm ashamed of you. You're nothing but a back alley punk. You'll never be anything else. What are you getting so sore about all of a sudden? Because I don't want you to make the same mistakes. Yeah, who cares? A kid that age with dice. I seem to remember a few years back, a young fella came to our town, gambled on a wildcat oil rig, and ended up a millionaire. That's different. It's not different. Everyone warned you not to gamble, and you went right ahead. I dug a hole in the ground, oil jumped out. Big deal. What the devil's she doing out here? I took her out like usual for a run. Then she started acting funny and laid down. What do you mean, like usual? Every week. One old sour stomach wasn't around. I took her out for some exercise. I hate seeing a dog locked up like she is. Now listen, boy. Answer me carefully. When you took her out, did any other dog come around her? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. Why? Is she all right? Well, she's about to have her pups. But who sired her pups? If she don't have anything but purebreds, you and I are going to catch it but good. Well, come on. 
Let's get her back. I just wanted you to know that Badger wasn't to blame for that crap game. All right. You do whatever you want to about it. Well, see you later, Janet. Goodbye, Judge. Thank you for coming. Badger's out and back. So what? Well, if I just thought you might want to apologize to him. Apologize? I don't apologize to nobody. Surly look out of your face. I'm not going to holler at you. What do you want? Well, uh, even, I mean, every now and then, even I make a mistake. Just want you to know that, that's all. You wanted me to know what? That I apologize. What do you think? I mean, about that crap game. Boy, you'd take anybody's word except mine, wouldn't you? I said I apologize. What more do you want? Nothing. The guy with brains don't have to fool around with penny any things like crap games, don't you see? You didn't have to get so sore. I got sore because I figured you for better things. Can't you understand that? I guess so. Andy, you better come in here. Uh, there's something you ought to know, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah? Uh, I couldn't keep my eyes on the 24 hours a day. What are you getting at? Well, it seems that boy had been taking her out for runs for the last six or eight weeks. He what? Now, don't get your hackles up. I don't know for sure, but I thought you ought to know, so if the pups aren't pure-blooded, you aren't surprised. What? Now, calm down. There's no proof. I'll murder that kid. Mongrel pups, that's what you'll have. Just as sure as I'm standing here. Gutter rats, just like that kid. It's the thanks I get for giving up my Saturdays all summer. That's just too bad, isn't it? For 10 years, I've heard you complain about your family not being landed gentry, about having to fight for everything you've got the heart. You aren't tootin' I did, but I did it. Yes, you did it all right. But if you ever thought of being grateful you had brains enough to do what a lot of college men couldn't do, you never went to college, you didn't have the money. So you just had to make a million dollars. Well, that's got nothing to do with my lady bird. Doesn't it, Bird? I think it does, Bird, more than you'll admit. What do you mean? For you, it has to be the best. Grade A tops, super best. Whether it's a house or a car or a horse or a dog. And for ten years, I watched you pushing and fighting, bluffing your way through to get what you want. Never content with anything you owned unless it was the very best. Not Jan. And don't think I don't know why you won't let me adopt a baby. You haven't bluffed me on that. Jan, I'm not going to stand yes, here. Yes, you are. You're going to stand there, but once you're going to listen. I wanted a baby. I wanted it to be ours as much as you did. I would have taken it on any terms. But not you. If you can't have your own, don't have any. It might not turn out right. It might not be the best in town. And that would be a tragedy, wouldn't it? Well, why don't you do with Lady Bird what you've done with me? What the heck are you saying? If she can't have the right kind of pups, just don't let her have any at all. Now, don't push me, Jan. I won't stand for it. You're afraid to face the truth. I'm not afraid of nothing. It's because you had a miserable childhood. All right. That's the way I am, and I can't change. Those pups aren't purebred. If they come out with spots or something, I'm gonna drown every one of them right in front of that Badger O'Banion's eyes. What do you think of that? I think you are a big blowhard. Yeah? Try me. Try me. You just try me. I'm sick of this whole big father deal. It was a screwball idea from the start. Hasn't done nobody any good. That kid hates me and my dog, and I hate him. They can put that in your pipe and smoke it. You seem to have things nicely figured. Oh. No, I... I'm sorry, honey, I... You, you know I don't mean half the things I say. I know. But you say them just the same. And the herd is there. Oh, hello, Bert. Oh, hello, Judge. There's a touch of fall in the air today. Yeah. Where's Badger? Must be out of the kennels. Come on, we'll find him. What are you doing out here, Mac? I'm paying you to take care of Ladybird. I was ordered out. You what? 
Watch it, Mr. Kendi. You won't get very far. Stop where you are, Fatso. You come one step closer, and I'm gonna unload at you. I want my dog. He ain't getting her. You ain't trying to know puppies while I'm around. I'm gonna get the law on you. Trying to little harmless puppies, you big fat jerk. You and all your money, and you're gonna kill little harmless puppies because they ain't stylish. Son, I was only talking. <laughs> it's a good thing you don't have any kids of your own. Because if you did, I'd sure feel sorry for him. What? Crime and he. Some father you'd make. I pity the kid, that's all. Don't you feel sorry for any kids of mine, see? You'd make a lousy father. I'd make a wonderful father, you miserable little punk. Don't you try to... Look, look, son, if, if that dog's gonna have her puppy, she's gonna need help. She's had her pups, and I helped her. She had him? Keep back. How many did she have? Seven. I was pretty busy, I tell you. And I'm keeping every one of these mongrel puffs for myself. And if you don't okay, you ain't never getting your dog back alive. Look, son, I, I only want to see him. They were sired for fire frost, Mr. Kennedy. All class A bird dogs. Purebred, he delivered him. What do you know about that? He delivered him alone. Even if they're not worth anything, they're good-looking mongrel dogs, and they're gonna stay alive, see? Okay, son. I gave them to you as a present. What? Something else. I want you to have Ladybird, too. What do you mean? Any boy who loves dogs as much as you do deserves it. You can raise them here. This is a pretty good place for dogs if you want them. You're mine, Lady Bird. I've wanted you for a hundred years, I guess. You're mine. Thank you. You're welcome, son. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Some people yell, that's all. I guess we gotta get used to it. It was nice of you, Bert, giving him the dog. I just got to remember him. I didn't have a darn thing until I struck oil. A kid's got to have something, anything, just so long as it's his. You can ask me, I, I remember it. It's odd, you know, I came out here today to suggest that we give Badger to someone else. Doc or Chick. Doc or Chick? What do they know about what's eating the guts out of a kid like Badger? They got no background for it, but me, I'm different. That kid there and I, we come from the same mongrel litter. I guess, by gosh, we, we better help each other. Jan, what do you say? Would you like to keep Badger for good? Oh, Bert. If we could. If we only could. All right, let's, let's not all sprinkle the candles with tears for crying out loud. Judge, do you think you could arrange that? Do you think you could fix this so that we could adopt that mongrel there? With pleasure, Bert. That is, if Badger doesn't mind having a mongrel like you for a father. But a very high-class type of mongrel, Judge. Next on a and &E. The classic tale of the adventurer who discovered America. Christopher Columbus, starring Frederick March and Florence Eldridge. on Reading for Success. Things are happening so fast right now.